Alrighty, um, it's time for some more winter prep. That garden behind me is done. You've seen me get it ready. I'll, I need to uh, put a tarp over that bed and the lettuce bed. I'm not sure. I'll probably I might just let it in lettuce. And I'll probably put peas in that bed. But the other two beds there, it's open. They're garlic in them. And then that you see me tarp it over after I put leaves in the walkways. Um, as you can see, there's leaves down on the ground everywhere. Um, I'm not worried too much at this point in time about getting them raked up. What I am going to do is that seeding those, uh, that right behind me is where our potatoes was. That area where the grass is real tall and there's a big bunch of bare spots and whatnot. Um, that's where our potatoes was. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it mowed down. I'm going to mow it down this evening. And um, I might tarp this evening yet. The wind's, wind's blowing pretty bad. I don't know if I'll get a tarp this evening or not. But I'm going to work on that. And I'm going to do the same thing to the to that bed right there that's where the um that's where the sunflowers was the annual sunflowers was i'm gonna mow it mow it down again and uh get a tarp for it as well so i'm gonna work on this evening so i'm not sure when this video will come out but that's today is thursday so i ain't put one out since tuesday so it's kind of weird not putting one out every night but it's nice to have a break too so these next bunch of videos probably be a little longer than what they've been before but It'll have more stuff going on in them, and there might be some that's shorter. But this near, it probably won't be real long. So I just, I just use a cobalt 40 volt push mower. We mow the whole yard with it. You can mow the whole yard on one battery. I only been 20 minutes. I'm done mowing, so I ain't like I got a lot of lot to mow. But I'm gonna mow this area here down, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, you see me mow. I mowed one path and then I lowered the lawnmower down as low as it would go and I mowed it again. Um, the last two years I grew potatoes in that bed. And this tree right here, this tree here is a, uh, it's a pink lady apple tree. It's right pretty much in the middle of the potato patch. That's all right, I'm not sure I'm gonna grow it here next year, but right now I'm gonna put the tarp down. Um, the, tarp, the tarp that we use for here we put a slit in it last year, so we did it around that tree. So I'm going to put the tree, put that down, and we'll put some uh, fire hose down to hold it for the winter. So, so I'm going to do next. All right, I tarped down. 
I knew we had one for that size for there. Finding out where the cut was and it was was the worst part. We had it turned sideways, but we got it figured out now. Um, we put a fire hose down on each end, which you've seen. Then we got up some rocks and put on the ends. I got another fire hose. I might cut it in half like this one and put it down. <clears throat> but if the wind ain't blowing like it is right now, we should be good. So another bed ready for winter. Then now I gotta do the sunflower bed. I mowed it earlier. As you can see there, um, I mowed it down. I only mowed it down once, but if I put it, when I put a tarp over it, it'll cover it up pretty good. So that's, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna pull one down or not. It's a nice windy, I mean, super windy night. Actually, the wind, wind, the wind advisory for here till uh, tomorrow sometime, but tomorrow's supposed to rain. Which should be all right. Get this, get this ground here good and wet before I put a tarp down. But I don't. It's too windy to put another one down this evening, so I'm not going to put any more down tonight. So, okay, it's time for more winter prep. Um, the other day you saw me mowing, mowing and covering up the where the potato patch was. Actually, that was earlier this video, but it was actually two days ago. Um, so today I'm going to unhook our pump from the from the tank. We have a tank, we collect rainwater from the roof. This is 1,500 gallon tank. We collect it, I got it on hook now, it's just running on the ground. Now this here, this goes in there where that white uh, cap is now. I'll take it out and stick that in there when I need to fill it up. I'm not gonna drain the tank. The tank won't, it won't freeze enough to worry about it, but um, I got a pump hooked up that I pump it over to the other side of the house and there's two 300 gallon tanks over there and then we got two 300 gallon tanks in the greenhouse so we collect all that rainwater. And that's what we use to water our plants with our, for our nursery. Um, I just got a, let me get the door open. I just got a pump inside a little, little building. Um, I just got it hooked up with a garden hose there and then i got a union here this here's what feeds the this is what feeds the uh tanks across on the other side of the house and then i got a garden hose this here goes to the garden and this here's just a hose that we drag around and use for whatever and this goes to the tank so it don't take long to unhook it i just need to go and hook it um and then i'll hook the garden hose into that because where i have it at that valve that i have down there let me turn the camera around the valve down there i'll actually take it off i don't want that valve freezing and busting this winter so i'll take that valve off and i'll get a little water on me but i'll it'll uh then the garden hose will just screw right in here into that fitting so yeah anyhow that's what i'm going to get in. okay first things first i turned the valve off coming out of the tank so I, there's still water in this naturally because i didn't drain the drain the pump or nothing um first things first unplug it it just plugs into 110. Um, this valve up here is off, so I'm gonna unhook this union up here first, get it out of the way, and then there's a check valve right here Then I just uh, unscrew this, and then the pump will come out, and then I'll take the rest of this part out here where I can get to a little easier. But yeah, that thing's first. Anybody's ever worked on plumbing before? I do this every winter, so, and in the spring again. But on a union normally, Normally, when you take a union apart, you gotta and put it together. You gotta put antiseeds on it. When you take it apart, a lot of times you gotta tap on it like that to get it break loose. And it's not real tight. I just tight enough to see it, but it's not. A little bit of water in there, but it ain't too bad. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be too bad. I'm only going from here up, and then whatever's in this line. This when I put when I put this garden hose on this spring, I tightened it up pretty good so it wouldn't leak at all. Don't have to worry about it. So it's it's pretty snug as well. Actually, yeah, I'll take it off over there. I'll take it off over there and let it on this because I got there's no swivel on that. So I gotta yeah, don't swivel. So I'll move you over here. 
Let me take you around the back side. Maybe you can see. Maybe you can see what's going on. Get these stupid flowers out of the road. Not a very good idea, was it? I'll readjust you from over there. This here's the hose that was going that's going to the pump. If I turned these valves off so that that wouldn't come out, and then I'm gonna grab the I'm gonna take this off. Stick that washer back in, it fell off. Oh sorry, you can't see me. Stick that washer back in because it fell off. I'll pull this through the other side. I'll pull that through the other side, and then uh yeah, I'll pull it through here so you can see what's up. Let me readjust my mount there you go now you can see what's up and i'll just pull this out now i'll grab the whole pump the whole pump unit get it out of the way Yeah, and that'll leak for a little while, but it shouldn't leak too long. So then I'll uh, unhook this hose. Oops, let me turn that valve off. Turn both of them valves off, actually. Then this hose here is what'll hook up up above where I just unhooked it from the tank. This hose right here. So then I'll still have water this winter, whenever, somewhat, but it won't be. It'll just be gravity fed set you down then this goes to the garden it's turned off too and this tank's still full of pressure so now that I got all that unhooked I can move this out of the way it's fairly heavy when it's full of water and just open one of them valves up. Let's see if I can make you see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, right there. And then just whatever's in that tank, all it'll, it'll just come out, and then I'll drain all this out good and actually store this in the greenhouse so it don't freeze up. So that's pretty much all we do. Um, then I'll hook that garden hose back up up there. And uh, yeah, that's how we. Get her water all summer, but then I want to make sure I don't freeze and bust my pump. Cause it gets the comfort to get down to the 20s this week coming. Um, so I don't want it to freeze and bust. I don't know that it would at that temperatures, but I, I don't want to find out and have to buy a new pump. And more winter prep taking place. Um, <clears throat> right now I'm just going to unhook all the water to the timer. This here timer, these two here feed two drip lines out around the, for the potted up plants. Um, I'll show you those here shortly. I need to drain the line out of that, water out of them too, so they don't freeze up the next few weeks. Um, this here goes back into the greenhouse, or this just garden hose that we got hooked up. This is coming from the tanks inside where you see me change the filter the other week. Um, so I'm just gonna turn all these valves off so I don't get wet. Turn the timer to the off. And there's just batteries in this. It's just a cheap thing from Lowe's, but it works. It works it pretty good, actually.
You got that all tore apart and never even got wet. Kind of hard to believe, ain't it? And I'm just going to hook these two. Let me view up here a little bit. You still see me? So then this here, I'll just take the battery out of it so it doesn't run the batteries dead or get all corroded up in the back all, over the over the winter months. So. And then there it is. That's all there is to it. Just pop this out. We'll take the batteries out of that. They're still good, but... So there you go. Um, I'll show you the rest of it here shortly. I need to get this put away and wrap these hoses up. And I'll uh, show you the rest of the setup here just in a few seconds. Okay, so you've seen the other end of this <clears throat> down there on the timer. Um, I just got a fitting on the on the uh, irrigation hose where I can screw this in, the, the uh, garden hose into it. And I got one on another one. This is just all how they end. I just can't come over and tape them. They can't cover and the water don't come out them. They come through, through these. When they got some plants, I got two in. Some only got one in. Depends on how big the pot is. But that's all, that's all our drip is. So I'm gonna unhook the water lines now. Let them drain out. They should should. I don't know if they're empty or not. How much of them? So on these then, these I'll just let out all winter. Um, these will pull out of the pots and let these, we'll let them out all winter as well. But then we'll just stack these pots up. We'll have them tight to each other all throughout the winter months. So it'll be like pot to pot and we'll show you that when we get them done. But um, that's that's pretty much our water line. The uh, other, other hose that goes to the water line here behind, or to the plants here behind behind me it goes to those plants i got one line there and it ends it's the one that ends right to here sorry for jerking around this is the one that ends here that one there comes from over there and then this one here that i just unhooked if you see me unhook it does all those plants so these are all perennials they'll all they'll all be fine out here in the winter months so we've we've done it like this for several years actually so, um, yeah, that's how we do it. Okay, I got most of the outside chores taken care of for today, for water-wise anyways. Um, I showed you that the whole way through. Um, so now I'm gonna uh, put props under, under the, in the greenhouse, so just in case snow load gets too heavy. I don't know that I would have to. That ridge, that ridge pole, wanna, right there where the corner of the, right, I can't find it. You move backwards in the camera, just in case he's wondering. Right there in that crotch. I'm gonna run a board to the ground. Just two by fours. That's what I did last year. Um, it held up fine. We had a fair bit of snow last year, but not as much as we've gotten in the past. So I'm just gonna go through and do that. Um, it's just a little over 12 foot in the peak. So 12, foot, 12 footers couldn't, wouldn't quite do it. So I just got two. Two eights. I'm just gonna splice them together and with with some uh, outdoor wood screws, <clears throat> like the one. Actually, it's gonna be the same screws that I used to make my uh, screwed my dibbler together with. If you watch me plant the garlic, so um, so yeah, that's that's where I'm at with that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that step by step, but I'm gonna uh, speed it up so you ain't gotta watch it monotonously. I know you can't see high enough. For what I'm gonna do, um, I'll step you through it. So basically, and I'll show you, I'll zoom in on it when I get done so you can see what I got. So basically, I um, put this one here is up in the crotch that I showed you a minute ago, and then this back one is in the uh, 
on the ground. Ready to get us to the table. So, squeeze out the top. I'll lift up on that as hard as I can. And I'll just put a clamp on it. Put a clamp on it like that, and then I'll just put put a half dozen screws in there somewhere. So I'll show you what I got up top, so you can see what I'm talking about. So all the way up top there, um, that board's up against actually lifting up a little bit on the on the ridge pole. So I don't know that I would need that. This greenhouse is probably strong enough to hold it, hold it, but I don't want to find out the hard way that I should have done that. So. Um, and then down on the bottom, let me show you the bottom too, sorry. It's just it's just flat on the ground. Then it's up against that board. And I'll, and I'll put a screw in the bench and then it'll just sit there like that. So that's pretty much all that I'm doing through here. I'll put four of these in, one at every, one at every other, let me show you back up top again. One at every other ridge, one at every other hoop. We'll get a, so the next one, the next one will be the one right before the water hose and then past it and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. I'll show you this when I'm get, when I get done with it, but that's, that's what I'm going to do throughout that whole thing. Okay, so I got all those in, and I got, zoom in, it's right up against that strap that holds the ridge pole to the, to the hoop. It's up, it's in that crotch just as hard as you can push it. You can't get it over any, any further or, or you would, uh, yeah, you'd be on that clip instead of on the, on the ridge pole, or on the hoop. And, um, I got enough pressure on them that... It's actually pretty sturdy um so yeah i got that on every other one them hoops are four foot centers so every eight foot i put a put a put a brace in so um yeah I, right now there's weight on them right now because i was lifted up on them um so when when we get a snow load on there it'll be uh we'll actually have more of a load on than there is you can see the leaves on the Outside layer of plastic, pretty cool looking from inside here. But in the greenhouse, when it's sun, when it's daylight outside, it's pretty warm in here. It's probably mid to upper 50s in here today. With no heat on, the heat's not on. I won't turn the heat on till if I'm out here working in the nighttime or whatever, I'll turn it on. But um, it won't be on. It won't be on until February or March, probably before it ever turns on all the way. But, I just wanted to show you how we get ready for winter inside the greenhouse. Now, all right, so that's going to wrap this video up. Um, so I got four in, hi, every other, every other one. And um, so Tuesday's video is going to be on a recipe for Jerusalem artichokes. It's going to be a cooking tip instead of a gardening tip. It's going to be a cooking tip, but you got to know how to cook it if you're going to grow it, right? So, um, so that's where we are with that. We're gonna go outside right now. The wife's out there logging how many plants we have and unhooking that, pulling them, pulling them uh, water things out of them plants that's outside that I showed you a little bit ago and I was unhooking the water. She's pulling the needles out. And so we're gonna gather them up and get them closed off tonight yet. But well, I don't know if we'll get it done, but we're gonna, gonna get it started on it anyway. Um, so that's gonna wrap this one up. So until we meet again, take care and God bless.